Hi Jason. Hello again Jo. Great to have you here again with yeah. Hardys. Yeah, isn't it? Now, last week we were talking about the fact you've never been sick mm -hmm. in the last 17 years. Yes. So tell us a little bit about how you do that. Yeah, well, it was quite a process and it was uh, literally what led me to being here now is when I was very young, I was very, very unwell and I basically got asthma, hay fever at a very young age and I would get every kind of bug, every flu, every cough, every cold. So every year it went into winter. I was one of those people and we all know people like this. Uh, I got every sickness that went around. I was always getting sick. I'd be in bed for a week, sneezing and coughing and phlegm and, you know, all the bacteria would catch up with me and it would be, you know, a real bummer every year. It was terrible. Uh, so I went through this process because I was told I was incurable and nothing could be done. The only option I had was food. So I changed my diet and um, in, in that process of changing my diet, I really learned about the immune system and I really learned that diet is the controlling factor on whether you get sick or not. And of course it makes really common sense when you think about it, but we don't often think about it that hard. And so for me, I was really able to completely transform my health and transform my immune system to the point where it's very strong now. And the key thing is, what I did was I removed those things that cause trouble. So I removed gluten, because I don't go well on gluten, removed alcohol, removed meat, all those things that were setting me off and causing constipation and imbalance in my gut bacteria, congestion in my lungs, all those things were removed. And now I just eat the things that serve my body well. So one of those crucial things with your immune system is to eat what makes you well and keeps you well, and then your immune system is just pumping. And it's nothing to do with genetics, because I'm the same genetic structure I was when I was born. You know, but now my health for the last 20 years, I never get sick. For 25 years before that, I always got sick. So not about genetics at all, but about genetic expression. And the genetic expression comes from your gut, and of course your gut's where your immune system lives. So how does the immune system work? Well, it's a very complicated process, uh, and it's, it's why we call it the immune system, because it's kind of like a system in its own right. But it's run by little spark plugs and things we call vitamins, we call them minerals, plant chemicals, and things like that. And it's based in the gut, so most of it's right in there. So if your gut's in good shape, your immune system will be in good shape. That's one of the key things. Signs of being a bit run down with your immune system is colds, coughs, things like that. Also constipation is another warning sign for your immune system. So... It works basically with a mixture of uh, different nutrients working together, the gut health being balanced, and having enough sleep and rest and allowing the body to recover as well. Your immune system is basically um, designed to fight off illness and fight off bacteria and bugs and keep you well. And the thing you'll notice is as soon as you die, your immune system turns off, obviously, and then you start to decay because all that bacteria that normally doesn't get in because your immune system's keeping it away will all literally take over and you rot and you literally disappear because your immune system's gone. What has the gut got to do with our immune system? Great question. What has our gut got to do with it? Well, our immune system lives in the gut. So 85% plus of your immune system is literally right there in the gut. So as you can imagine, if you're eating foods that are not feeding your gut, if you've run your gut down, if you've had a lot of gluten, a lot of alcohol, wrecks your gut, cigarette smoke, stress, things like that, really wipe out your gut health. And that bacteria is what literally lives and breathes and grows your immune system. So because your immune system is living right there in the gut, you must look after your gut. And how do you do that? The things we know to do, good food, exercise, lowering your stress levels, making sure you're getting enough sleep, you know, looking after yourself generally. People think it's inevitable that they'll get the flu or colds during winter. Ultimately, it's down to diet and lifestyle, isn't it? Absolutely, it certainly is. And, and with my own self, I can literally eat myself sick if I want to. If I wanted to eat a lot of really bad processed foods and refined foods, drink alcohol and smoke and get myself stressed and not enough sleep or exercise, I would literally get sick. And I've had moments in my adult life where I can feel my chest tightening up and I can feel the asthma coming back. But I never let myself ever get that sick, obviously. Um, but those little things you can do, it's so important you know, to really uh, look after your gut, look after your immune system. Uh, to make sure that you don't get sick and how you do that is one of the simple lifestyle changes that you can make. It really, really is easy. Um, and, you know, you can avoid winters with coughs and colds. I've got people on the program that I work with people on the Feel Alive plan where people come in and they have their very first year where they never get sick. And they say, I can't believe it. I used to be always the guy at work, you know, it was getting sick and run down and tired all the time. I'm not anymore. So you can literally eat your immune system into wellness 
and eat it into not getting sick, as I have done, if you're willing to do the work with your diet. So what recommendations do you make for ultimate immunity? Well, there's a couple of key things. The first thing is to remove the things that are setting you off. Like for everyone, it'll be different. Some people find they eat orange and they get hives and rashes. Some people it's watermelon. Some people it's red meat. Some people it's alcohol. In fact, most people it's alcohol. <laughs> but, you know, there's a, there's a mixture of things that set people off and damage your immune system and your gut. And it's a matter of the first step is to find out what those things are. And it's another reason that I put people on an elimination diet. So remove the dairy products and the meat and the wheat and things like that that are generally the things that weaken your immune system. So firstly, remove the triggers that set you off. And some of those are environmental. So maybe you're living in Auckland and that you find that there's a lot of hay fever and things around. Now I live in Auckland and I've cured my hay fever just through diet, so it can be done. But it's removing those things that weaken the immune system. And then obviously bringing in the things that boost the immune system. So take away the things that make you weak and bring in the things that make you strong. And we know it's always the same old message when you're wanting to get well. Get back to a plant-based whole food diet. Get away from your processed foods like your hamburgers and your pizzas and things like that. Bring in your fresh fruits, your vegetables. Make sure you're getting eight hours sleep a night. It's really, really important. Eating living foods like your raw foods, really important for your immune system because they contain your vitamins. And of course your vitamins like vitamin C, vitamin D, uh, beta carotene, things like that, vitamin E, are so important in running your gut health and your immune system. So making sure you've got enough of that in your diet and that you're well rested because stress is a key thing as well. And that's how you do it. So remove the bad stuff and bring in the good stuff and your immune system transforms. How did you reach such a great level of immune health? Did it take you long? Uh, it took me about four years. And what happened was I went through a process of changing my diet quite dramatically. So I slowly removed all those key things. One of the biggest triggers for me was gluten. The other key thing was dairy products. So I've been dairy free and gluten free for a good couple of decades now. So for a long period of time. And I find that if I, over the years, I have dabbled back in foods like that, I find that it will only take two or three days for my nose to clog up, for me to start feeling tightness in the chest, getting asthma symptoms and hay fever symptoms, and also constipation. I feel it in my gut really, really quickly. So it took me about four years of hard work, um, but distilling that down really is about those diet and lifestyle things. I realized I needed more sleep. I realized I needed leafy green vegetables because the most important food group, of course, is leafy green vegetables. You must have lots and lots and lots of leafy green vegetables. Half a plate for lunch and half a plate for dinner is what I recommend. And another key thing I did was regular fasting. And we'll get into that for another webinar another day. But fasting is one of those key things that if you just don't eat for a day, just have some green leafy juices, green, green vegetable juice, your body basically gets a chance to turn all that energy and all that, that useful energy it has into healing the body and getting rid of waste rather than constantly having to be stressed and take care of things and process food and all this kind of thing. So for me, the diet and lifestyle changes were really important. Uh, about four years it took and uh, I've never looked back. And once you get your immune system really well, then you can just get into cruise mode where you know the key things you need to do and you do them and you know the key things to avoid. So you avoid doing that and then your immune system just flies. And I tell you, it's so much better not being sick. So how does sleep, exercise and stress affect our immunity? Well, there are three key lifestyle things. For instance, stress is one of the key killers on the planet. We know that it just is so damaging. And how stress works is in a couple of ways. Firstly, stress immediately induces cortisol in the body. Now, cortisol is part of that fight or flight reaction that we've always had. We're out in nature and suddenly a saber-toothed tiger wants to eat us. So suddenly we're pumped with stress. The whole body gets tense and then we immediately want to run or fight. And the whole body starts to lock up. All the blood supply goes away from digestion and the other symptoms goes to the muscles, gets you ready for the fight. So the body changes its dynamic when you get stressed into kind of survival mode as opposed to no healing and relaxing and just feeding all the necessary systems. So cortisol gets raised. Now what cortisol does is raise inflammation. And we know one of the key root causes of all those lifestyle diseases that are killing us, like heart disease and cancer, osteoporosis, arthritic problems, autoimmune diseases, diabetes, obesity, is inflammation. So it's one of those root causes at the bottom of almost all illness is that it's directly caused by cortisol and stress. So you can see how that immediately will stress your immune system. And if you can't even fight a cough or a cold, how are you going to fight something when something really goes wrong? So that's why I talk to a lot of people about prevention. If you can get to the point where you're going three times a day, good regular bowel movements, and you're never getting sick with a cough or a cold, or if you do get one, it's gone in half a day, that's when your immune system is really starting to work. 
So those are the key things. Uh, stress really brings it down with inflammation and acidity. A lack of sleep basically removes the body's ability to regenerate overnight. We know the muscles regrow, the body heals itself and works hard overnight. So making sure you're getting a nice long period of rest every night, about eight hours is about right. Uh, and I try to recommend for people going to bed at 9 or 10 o'clock at least five nights a week. It'll make a big difference to the immune system. And when you get up in the morning, you exercise. So that's the other aspect is you get out into nature and you breathe fresh air. You oxygenate the blood. We know the more oxygen in the body, the cancer can't grow in an oxygen-rich environment. Those little things, those diet changes, such as having eight hours sleep a night, lowering your stress, improving your relaxation. So having time out every day to do the things you want to do and to enjoy yourself. Uh, and getting enough exercise and getting all that oxygenation into the body is so important for transforming your immune system. So what would you recommend to a person who follows your dietary advice but still gets the occasional uh, cold, flu or hay fever symptoms? Uh, okay, so if you've got someone, if you're getting enough sleep every night, if you're getting regular exercise, you're feeling flexible and you've done your yoga and your stretching uh, and you're keeping your stress levels very low and feeling nicely relaxed and you've transformed your diet, then there are some other things you can take alongside. It may need that you need a boost of vitamin C, and there's some great natural whole food vitamin C supplements. The neat thing about vitamin C is you want to make sure you get a good natural whole food vitamin C and take small doses regularly, because that's how we're designed to absorb vitamin C is small regular doses as opposed to mega doses. Another one is vitamin D. It's so important, you know, sunlight. Every animal on the planet, all the human beings, our immune systems run on sunlight which is vitamin D. We call it vitamin D, but it's otherwise known as sunlight. You know, it hits the skin, gets absorbed, and it runs your immune system via getting converted into a, um, a compound called 125D. It's the most powerful antioxidant protector we have. Runs our entire immune system, we get it from sunlight. Now, if you can't get enough sunlight, as some people always ask me, you can get that in a supplement. So I know at the Hardy stores, you guys will have those supplements available. So a good quality of vitamin D going into winter. And we know from studies around the world, the children with the lowest levels of vitamin D going into winter are always the children with the highest levels of sickness. So making sure you're preempt on vitamin D, vitamin C, and good levels of beta carotene as well, which you can get in your spirulina and barley grass and things. And of course, the classics are your echinaceas as well and your garlics. And garlic is such a wonderful superfood. We could spend hours on garlic alone. So a good quality garlic supplement as well, alongside those dietary changes and what will make the key difference. Oh, well, thank you so much, Jason. That's very timely with the colder weather yeah. now upon us. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Yeah, a few weeks' time, no doubt. Great. Thank you.